Limanthovi, Trump. Limanthovi, Trump, 949 F314 DC, Sir, 2020, was a U.S. constitutional law and federal civil procedure lawsuit heard by Circuit Judges Henderson, Tato, and Griffith of the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit. The case was on appeal from the United States District Court for the District of Columbia, where District Judge Emmett G. Sullivan granted in part and denied in part the President's motion to dismiss for lack of standing, denied the President's motion to dismiss for failure to state claim, and certified interlocutory appeal. On February 7, 2020, in a per curiam decision, the Court of Appeals held that individual members of Congress lacked standing to bring action against the President where they sought declaratory and injunctive relief for alleged violations of the Foreign Emoluments Clause. The court, finding in favour of President Trump, reversed and remanded the lower courts holding that the members had standing to sue with instructions to the district court to dismiss the complaint. The dismissal subsequently rendered the other issue on appeal, the holding that the members had a cause of action and stated a claim vacated as moot. Background and initiation of suit. Alexander Hamilton, one of the framers of the Constitution, was concerned about foreign corruption of the new United States. Towards that end, the Foreign Emoluments Clause can be seen as a measure to prevent corruption, but one that has yet to be interpreted by the courts. The plaintiffs, 29 senators and 186 representatives, led by the ranking member of the Constitution Subcommittee of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Richard Blumenthal, and the similarly situated ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee, John Kniz, Jr., alleged that the defendant, Donald Trump, was in violation of the Foreign Emoluments Clause, the constitutional provision that bars the President or any other federal official from taking gifts or payments from foreign governments without the approval of Congress. They alleged that this behaviour impeded their constitutional right to be advised of such foreign payments and their duty to weigh in on potentially unauthorised emoluments. With lawyers from the Constitutional Accountability Centre, the plaintiffs filed their complaint on June 14, 2017, shortly after similar lawsuits from Watchtree groups, the economic competitors, and state and local governments made the news. The court rejected several of Trump's arguments, and Trump's request for a writ of mandamus in the case was rejected by a higher court, but the case was stayed until December 2019 while a permitted immediate appeal of the case to date was decided. Timeline The initial case was filed on June 14, 2017. The defendant was served immediately, but because President Trump was being sued in his official capacity, no official action was required before August 14, 2017. On September 15, 2017, the government filed a motion to dismiss the case. Various supplemental briefs were filed between September and April 2018. Oral arguments were heard in June 2018, mostly debating whether lawmakers had standing to sue the president. U.S. District Judge Emma Sullivan ruled on September 28, 2018, that the plaintiff members of Congress are standing to sue in the case, but left for another day any ruling on other arguments raised by the Department of Justice's motion to dismiss. On April 30, 2019, Judge Sullivan denied Trump's motion to dismiss and further ruled that the plaintiff members of Congress had standing to sue, that there was grounds for injunctive relief against the president, and that the relief sought was constitutional. On August 21, 2019, Judge Sullivan, responding to the July 19, 2019 opinion of the District of Columbia Circuit Court denying Trump petition for a writ of mandamus, stayed the case pending a newly allowed interlocutory appeal of previous rulings to the District of Columbia Circuit. That appeal was argued before a three-judge panel on December 9, 2019, and the panel issued its decision, per curiam, ruling that the members of Congress lacked standing to suit remanding the case to the District Court with orders to dismiss.